What's up, everyone? This is Mars Man here, and welcome to Mars Man Gaming. First off, I am excited today because we are talking about the state of Halo, and you know, it fits, it fits kind of perfectly because we're midway through season two of Halo Infinite, and you know, I need to have some help here, and the best way to do it is get some really good Halo content creators on board. And I'm excited because I'm a fan of both of these guys. Um, so because first off, they have a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience playing Halo, and as you already know, I've been playing the game since I was eight, so we're all kind of on the same board here. So first off, I want to introduce Kevin Kulex. How's it going, man? Welcome. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me on today. Looking forward to having a little chitty chat about uh, some Halo, Halo good stuff. Yeah, man. And secondly, mm -hmm. we got the act, bro. How's it going? Hey, Mars, man. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Of course, man. Like I said, I'm a fan of both your channels, and and you know the fact you guys both have a lot of a lot of content, a lot of knowledge, a lot of just playing of Halo in general is always gonna gonna help in this discussion. But let's just jump right into it. Uh, first off, I want to talk about the current state of Halo, and we all know that Halo Infinite actually like it sprinted right out the gate. It when it first launched, it was like rocking it. I mean, everybody was playing this game, or at least tried it at some point. I mean, they hit that they had to put out that number that 20 million people at one point in time at least tried halo infinite and that is a major accomplishment for three for three but since then the numbers the population has gone down for sure and um you know it's it's been leaving like a lot of people have been leaving in droves and three for three has had a lot of setbacks up to this point and they definitely deserve a lot of flack for it i mean the fact is they've had uh when it comes to like issues with glitches or issues of not having content and things like that and you know people have mixed reviews of halo infinite on metacritic it's around that 87 to 88 so it's not a bad game at all but there are some issues and i feel like each one of us has played halo infinite um obviously each one of us is different varying in how much we play it but at the end of the day we've all played halo infinite we played all older games before so the biggest question i want to start out with is what do you think is the biggest flaw that halo infinite has in its current state and i want to go to you kevin first what do you think Oh man, put me on the spot right here. No. Oh uh, yeah, put you right on the I, spot. I would say the the biggest flaw with the game right now, honestly, I would I, beyond. I'd say beyond just like technical stuff that's going on with the game. I'd say the biggest thing is that it just feels like a typical Halo game, as that uh, you have a solid campaign. I love the campaign of Halo Infinite. I'm actually kind of doing like a little like side playthrough again, just because it's been a while. Uh, the multiplayer is good. Like it's a fun multiplayer to play. I think that uh, the biggest issue with it is that like what we got for Halo Infinite is a pretty standard Halo experience, which is something I know a lot of people wanted out of the game for sure. Um, though, though it's just kind of like it's 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 Halo. Like there's nothing mm -hmm. really too crazy to advertise about or say like, oh, why is this one so different? Like, oh, this one's different. It's because it's like the first like real good one that we've had since like. Halo 3, basically, yeah, essentially, basically. you know, because I this is the first time I've seen like everyone agreeing about like the gameplay aspects of Halo since Halo 3, ever since that, or since Reach and Beyond, it's, people have been complaining about what's in the game, what's not in the game, stuff like that. But I think we're at the first time we're at the first time we're like campaign multiplayer, fantastic kind of stuff. But the thing is that we've been playing campaign and multiplayer of Halo for the past 20 years for us dedicated fans, you know. Or, where people have been there since day one, like myself. Uh, and so then it gets a little stale pretty quick. Like the no novelty of 4v4 Slayer kind of, you know, wears off pretty fast, can, you know, after you've been doing it for 20 years, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. And, and so, uh, Actro, I'll get ask you the same thing. What do you think is the biggest flaw here? Uh, I feel like it's kind of a cookie cutter response, but um, I don't know. I feel like it's li lacking a lot of content and uh, it feels like the i don't know maybe it's just the gaming industry as a whole right now but they kind of launch with a lot of missing features and uh you know like with the early games they early halo games they had a lot of stuff going on for it they have like the forge mode and stuff uh they had the theater all that type of stuff and that's missing on launch i think with halo mm -hmm. 5 it was also missing on launch too yep um I think we got that a little bit sooner, though. I think it was a few months in, maybe yeah. like three or four months, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's like a huge part of playing the game and being able to share it with your friends and doing like custom games and stuff, too. Because I remember like even on launch day, my brother was trying to make custom games. And for some reason, it wasn't saving the games either. So mm -hmm. he just wasted like a ton of time trying to make something really cool that he could play with his friends. And he wasn't able to do that. 
Uh, so just, yeah, just a huge lack of, um, continuity, continuity, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. From, yeah. From some of the older games. And, uh, I mean, Halo has been a big franchise for a long time. So, uh, there's a like pretty big standards applied to it. And it just seems like they weren't really hitting as high as they could or should, mm -hmm. uh, especially considering it's, um, you know, Microsoft's flagship game that they should be pouring, I mean, like all the resources into, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, listen, I think you're in both your responses build on each other, too. I mean, Kevin, I completely agree that it's like, yeah, you know what? This is a standard Halo game. It kind of felt three for three was looking for, you know, just just let's, let's hit a single. Let's just get a single because at the end of the day, they're past. Essentially, that's what it was. Let's just get a single, like because yeah. let's, hit, the let's past, hit, for, hit for the batting percentage. Let's yeah, like the home runs. yeah, let's, yeah, the let's not let's get not the, <laughs> get the game moving. You know, yeah, just, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, and that's base, literally yeah. <laughs> yeah, just get on base. And because it felt like because when you look at the past two games, they were like Halo Four was COD, basically a revamped COD, right? Halo Five with Titanfall, um, with horrible storytelling, um, and then so they are like, all right, let's like. Let's try to just get a, get on base. Let's do a standard Halo game, right? And and Act Bro, you're completely right. I was gonna say the same thing. Content, right? Like you no, know, because they build off each other. You you gave us ten maps, right? Halo three had like I had like I think thirteen. Halo two had like twelve. You gave us ten, right? You gave us less than Halo two and Halo three did, and and obviously not as much game mode. You start out with what four game modes on launch? Like that's that's nothing, right? And if you and at the end of the day. I know you're trying to hit the safe single here, but you got to give us more content, give us more things to do. And, you know, the fact is you're only giving us a limited amount of maps. And then when the first drop of a new season comes around, you're giving us only two maps, right? Six months through in, into the, into the season. And all of a sudden, like, we don't really have enough. Like, and I think that most people are right on the spot of the gameplay is good. It reminds us of the classic Halo games that, and I think be honest, I was the most nervous about going into Halo Infinite was like, are we going more into Titanfall era? Are we going to start running on walls type of stuff? Or are we going to go kind of bring it back a little bit and say, all right, let's stick to like a Halo Reach movement and play that way. Um, and I think that they kind of nailed it on that part, but you got to give us some more stuff, right? Give us some more content. And I think that's like the biggest flaw at the moment, a lack of modes, a lack of maps, a lack of weapons, um, vehicles, right? And customization. Like it's just, there's like these flaws of just lack of content. And I, and content is just like a broad answer, but it's it, it's true. It's a lack of content, just lack of stuff to do. Um, and what honestly, to, to continue on with this, one of the biggest debates that I've heard since season one was whether or not Halo Infinite is dead. And because of the fact people have been debating this question uh, was because of the fact that there has been such a decrease in the population count from the start, hitting that 20 million population that they had and where it's at now is obviously dramatically like down. Like, and obviously that is something to look at. And I kind of want to ask you, and this is a big question too, Axe Bro, I'm gonna ask you first this time. Would you would you say that Halo Infinite is dead? What do you think? Ooh, uh, <laughs> that's a tough question. This is um, for the title of the video. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh I mean, that's that's tough. Let's see. I think I looked at the Steam charts and uh I think like what it, it launched in uh november right mm -hmm. november. yeah multiplayer launched in yeah, november i think they had like a peak of maybe on the steam charts it was like 100k or something concurrent i don't know if it's a, that's like daily or what i think that's is. at the peak yeah at the peak it was hidden yeah. probably around that like 150 yeah. 200 like around that number was the yeah. highest they ever hit and, i think okay yeah and then i think what it's six seven eight months now yeah uh, and they're yeah, down to now. like four thousand i think mm-hmm uh, phew, I don't think it's dead. I think it's dying. It needs to be put. It's on, probably on life support. Uh, it's kind of sad. It's supposed to be a title of like 10 years. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they're doing a lot of good events, like the mm -hmm. HCS stuff. Uh, I've heard a lot of good feedback about that. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't hear about it too much in the media anymore. And it's sad. Uh, it's kind of strange, too, because if you think about like some of the older games, maybe it's not fair to compare it to... Uh, early halo like one two and three but uh i mean those games were super alive and everything for arguably years after yeah. release you know um so yeah i think maybe it's in a slump to say mm -hmm. the least yeah yeah i feel you there man and kevin drop it to you now do you think halo infinite's dead no absolutely it's absolutely not dead if it was like dead 
first of all, you wouldn't even see it on like Xbox most played games webpage, which mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it definitely could be better. I think right now, last of my, I, mean, I haven't checked in the last few days, but like, I mean, when the game first kind of came out around February, we we're like, you know, top five ish kind of game. I think now we're like top 15 right now with Halo Infinite. Uh, with the Steam chart numbers, like I think a bit of like the mouse and keyboard input issue with the controller kind of plays into a factor of that as well when it comes to population because this Halo Infinite is definitely a lot more popular on console than it is on PC, at least through mm-hmm. Steam. Um, but it's definitely not dead. I think just like people just kind of like like I mentioned earlier, like the like you, or like kind of how you also you know made that analogy of going for the single rare for the home run mm-hmm. is that there is no like home run kind of experience to have with Halo Infinite. It's like it's pretty standard run, you know, not, you know, playing, playing it safe, you know, you know, like bowling with the, with the, with the borders up, you know, kind of thing. Like you're not going to miss this one. It's like, <laughs> it's a good halo experience, but like nothing really, there's no, nothing new really with halo infinite to really keep you, you know, coming back and playing unless you're just like, I love 44 Slayer, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing, which yeah, yeah. I am. So that's why I keep playing the game. I have over 400 hours logged into halo infinite right now. Um, so like they, it's definitely not dead, but it's definitely. I think people are just kind of like just waiting, you know, for something fun or interesting to come with the game to jump back in and play. Like, we'll definitely we'll see like a player boost spike when it comes to next week or whenever this video goes live on July nineteenth with the <laughs> new narrative event coming live. Um, we'll see what that does. Um, I don't have any high expectations. Probably not gonna, you know, nice little boost, but nothing anything that really changed the course of the game or, you know, where things are going right now with the game. But I think just really for the for, for the first year of this game, it's really just kind of be kind of like a you know waiting until things are awesome kind of situation. Which mm-hmm. you know, like I mentioned in a previous video, that like you know I've experienced this with uh, with Battlefield Three, Battlefield Four. Uh, we experienced this with MCC, uh, Destiny One, Destiny Two, uh, Division One. I remember as well. And just and that's just it. That, that's just like that's a scratch. And also like what like uh, Rainbow Six Siege, all first years, not the best experiences, but they stuck with it updated the games and things got better so that's kind of what i'm expecting with halo infinite but obviously mm-hmm. through for Linux to execute to make that happen no yeah i completely listen i agree with both of you guys i had a whole video about like halo is halo dying because that was like the big hot topic i feel like a few months ago like near close to the end of season one and um you know i, I was thinking to myself you know i i don't think it's dead i think it's hurting and i think that it's struggling because when i think of a game that's dead um, I'm thinking of something that's broken at its core. Like if I'm comparing like Battlefield 2042, I think is dead. Like if that game to me is dead because it's broken on so many levels that it's like the gameplay mechanics itself are broken. Like you, the map design being massive and you, you're running for five minutes straight and it's just boring, right? That's broken. Like that's dead because you, you're just not having fun. Halo Infinite's a fun game. It's just there's not enough, enough there to keep everyone just continuously playing. Now, granted... You know, Kevin, you're playing. I'm playing. I know acting. You're doing. Uh, you know, act bro. You're doing a lot of like MCC. I, te- I am like so. so act, act bro. Uh, you're playing. You're playing. You're playing out MCC. You're playing Halo. Like you're waiting. You're waiting for something big to come in to say, hey, maybe I can jump back on on Halo Infinite again. Like at the end of the day, it's like we're all like we all are sitting around a Halo at some point. We're playing it varying degrees, but at the end of the day. You know, it's not broken or not. It's not dead. It's just like it's hurting right now. It's not enough stuff to to have, right? I think when you're looking at like you're looking at other games, and Kevin, you said this exactly. Where you know you look at you know state uh, um like No Man's Sky, perfect example. They literally had a game that had you did nothing. All just, all you did was explore planets and could do nothing else, right? All of a sudden, they changed up their mechanics, had some action put in there, and all of a sudden, it's one of the most viewed games on you know on on Twitch and other devices because people are having fun playing it, right? And essentially, that's kind of what I'm looking at Halo Infinite. It's not even to that degree, but they will come back. It will be a, a popular game again. I just think that they need to have some content and need some stuff there, and then you're all good, right? And I think it's not dead. It's hurting for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I I do agree with you guys. It's just like it's it's hitting a struggle point right now. And <laughs> with, with that being said, with that being said, we... I, I don't like to dwell on the past. We got to talk about the future, right? We got to start saying, "All right, let, let's look to the future of Halo Infinite." And and I again and I get it. A lot of people are saying, you know, they want to see better from Halo. They want to see better from Three for Three. And I completely understand that. Um, but what's interesting is is that there's been a like a lot of things leaked. And I know Kevin, you discussed a lot of this in your videos. So go check that out. And I will put Kevin and Act Bro 
both your video, <laughs> both your channels in the in the description below. So I make sure um, I'll put that in the description below. So definitely go check out their channels and, and you know take a look at their your videos here. But a lot of stuff has been leaked on Halo Infinite, and you know we've seen aspects of Forge where they they show like the amount of things you can do with Forge um, is insane. Like they're basically creating gravity guns, like you would see. Uh, and, and, like it's just insane. Like and there's like, only many ways you can adjust maps with weather and stuff like that. We heard about new maps on Big Team Battle and Arena. New game modes are coming, like this new Battle Royale uh, by made by Certain Infinity. Like these are all things that are being leaked and rumored. And it seems like season three will be like kind of be that turning point, I guess you would say, for for Halo Infinite. Um, and I feel like if three for three can stick the landing, you're gonna have you know a, a good, sizable launch of a lot of new content and a lot of new things to bring. So. I kind of want to ask you guys, and this is a pretty big question, but you can be as limited or as grand as you want to be here. Kevin, I'm going to have to ask, go with you first here. What do you want to see added to Halo uh, Halo Infinite Season 3 to mark it as a success? Uh, I think this kind of ties into like my first answer as well, is that uh, to have some kind of new experience you can have with Halo. Uh, yeah, like bringing Forge back is going to be great for, one, the competitive scene, so they can kind of get like, map settings and things like that how they like it um but you know having split screen co-op is coming in season three is gonna be great as well um new maps you know new new weapons apparently with sandbox items they mentioned so maybe new equipment and stuff like that but that's all kind of like you know nice little additional kind of stuff but like mm -hmm. what's gonna be like something that's gonna be like a wow factor to kind of bring people back to get to the game i don't really see that happening with season three uh nine so we have like i said like some crazy new game mode that we've never experienced before in halo being like you mentioned with the tatanka mode with certain affinity being that rumored battle royale right now um there is i did recently catch this one uh leak that's been going around talking about there being like a pve type of mode mm -hmm. where it's kind of like based on like extraction where basically you have like point a you need to get to take the object bring it back to point b kind of thing and while you're doing that you have to fight banish along the way of course this is all just kind of like leaked information that recently just kind of came out so uh, i mean i did make a whole video on it talking about it or seeing like what could be uh so especially since we've seen toy leaks with like extraction being involved with the name of uh, some of those toys mm -hmm. uh of course then you know things are subject to change this is a long time down the road kind of thing like you know we're talking well, definitely not within you know before the next e3 comes around you know this would be like a fall 2023 kind of thing we're talking at the earliest mm -hmm. uh so that's something i would definitely like to see just something new fun like yeah you know, like yeah you can bring back firefight but like we've played firefight you can bring back forge we've all played forge um mm -hmm. and it's just you know you could bring back the classic shotgun and you know but we've all used that a million times kind of thing so I think that something like new and fresh and exciting would be something that would be fun for people to play and get like, you know, generate some buzz when it comes to Halo. Mm -hmm. I feel you, man. So Ash, bro, what do you think? What do you think needs to be added for season three to be a success? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it could be a number of things, really. Uh, I'm just trying to think. I mean, what I'm kind of, I, I guess I'm going to go with kind of what Kevin was saying, something new. Um, I mean, I am a personal, I'm personally a big fan of uh, Battle Royale, so I don't know how you guys feel about that. Uh, I, I would be I, happy to play it, yeah. I think Halo I, would be an awesome sandbox for a Battle Royale. That would Just be saying. awesome. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd love a Battle Royale. It'd uh, bring a lot of life back into it. Uh, a lot of people would come back for sure just to try it out even. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if you don't have a battle royale, I think a mode like, do you guys remember Warzone and Halo 5? I, oh, yeah. I don't know. I found that to be probably the most played mode that I have. You know, a lot of controversy around the rec system for good mm -hmm. reason uh, with the micro transactions, but, you know, being able to fight players and, um, you know, the Covenant or Banished or whatever was a ton of fun. So, you know, hopefully something like that. Um, it's going to take a lot of development and work, so maybe it's not exactly feasible for season three, but uh, that would be something that I'd love to see for sure. Yeah, fact, I think I would say that kind of ties into what I was talking about earlier. Like, you know, with Halo Reach, we had Invasion. With yep. Halo 4, we had, you know, Spartan Ops, which, you know, yeah. didn't exactly execute Super Bowl, but it was a really good it's, idea. Yeah, it was and, then, and then you had Warzone with Halo 5. was like kind of the new fun experience to play with the game. We just didn't really get that with Halo Infinite. We just kind of got yeah. more Halo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and listen, I, I agree with you both. I think 
I mean, granted, I even think for me, I, I the fact that if they can like prioritize Forge to help them like bring more energy back into Halo, I think getting the community behind them. I mean, like you guys both saw how they had those PC modders like help bring content that was cut away from MCC, MCC, and they started bringing them all that, and all of a sudden you see the buzz again from people like, oh, I'm excited to be able to go back and check out some of these new uh, armors or new new campaign missions that were cut away from the games from Halo 2 and Halo 1. I mean, like, people are already excited about that, and let alone get people invigorated to now, let's make all these new game modes, make all these new maps, and I feel that if you can prioritize Forge and having things that the community makes be included in the main game would be such a big thing for me because... I just remember back in Halo 5 when they launched the game without Big Team Battle. And so 343 was like, well, uh, we need maps. So they said, hey, community members, make some maps and we'll have a vote and see who which ones are the best ones. And they put all six of those in the rotation. All of a sudden, everyone was like, I got to play some Big Team Battle. I want to play some community maps. I just remember that was such a cool thing they did. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? If you do that for Halo Infinite, I can guarantee you, you'll be having like six, six maps added. Like everyone's going to be like hyped to be able to play a community made map made by the fans themselves and i i would say like granted i'm not i'm horrible at forge i can't make maps for my to save my own life but playing a map by somebody else that like recreates a bit old halo 1 halo 2 map i'll be like i'd be excited to do that and i also think that i know that apparently season 3 is supposed to be their you know revamping of the rank system i i mean like if they could revamp that system please like everything like i got i i literally was hitting like onyx like close to to like like 16 or like 1650 and i'm like oh i'm like doing well and all of a sudden i start losing in like a chunk every chunk after chunk after chunk and i'm sitting there like how am i gonna drop out of onyx i finally got all the way here and because of how it's set up it just it makes me lose it i'm like like come on like they got to revamp this thing and i know that they're gonna do that that's what they're rumoring to do um and i'm like big on customization if you guys can like give me some i know cross core customizations coming to halo infinite that's They've already said that it's going to come a little bit at a time, but if you can get me the ability to have cross core and please let me pick my own colors. Like, can I please pick my colors? Whoa, like, whoa, I, whoa, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's take a yeah. step back here. You're asking too much. Here, I know, right? Be able Primary, to, secondary? Nah. Oh my, dude, I do. I look, as you, you can tell, blue. as you can tell by <laughs> my, all my, <laughs> I know, you can tell by my gear and, and I'm, I'm sure on video, you can see by my, all my colors here, green and black. That's all I need. Give me some green, black, and white. That's all I'm asking for. If I can pick those colors on my Spartan, that's all I'm asking for. And I'm not even asking for a lot here. I mean, I, I, it's just crazy. Like, give me the ability to do something like that, and I'll be, I'll be, I'll be happy. Like, <laughs> like, I, like I said, and listen, both of you are right. If they start dropping modes like a, a wars, a Return of Warzone, or a Battle Royale, or something along the lines of like a P PVE mode, I would be ecstatic if they were to drop that season three. I, I mean, that would be amazing. Um, I just, I, I feel like we would see more from it. If that, if that was the case, we would see like, oh, this is rumored coming season three. Then I'd be like, all right, now I'm starting to get hyped here. But I agree with you. I think throughout season three now, it's probably going to be six months long. So, hey, it's another six month long season, which I hope it's not. But if it is, they should be able to drop a mode throughout season three. Like they should be able to. It's six months. It's another six months. Like you, you should be able to do something here. Um, but as I said, guys, I feel that season three is supposed to be the turning point uh, where fans uh, will either be completely on board with the future of Halo Infinite or turn the other direction and say, I'm not playing Halo Infinite until something finally comes out and just kind of step away from the game. And obviously the fact that Joseph Staten made his return is, is on board with kind of putting things in the right direction. I feel like he is doing the right things here. Um, but I want to ask you guys a question. This is a big one. And Akbar, I'm going to go to you first here. If you were leading three for three, what do you think would be the best way to get fans excited to jump back onto Halo Infinite? Oh, man. Uh, you, you gotta get your boss, your boss hat on. Let's get, let's get <laughs> it. The, the, the best way to get, oh man, it's a that's a super tough question because uh, you know once you get them on uh, and they leave, it's hard to get them back. So, mm -hmm. uh, man, I, you'd have to. I feel like you'd have to dump one of those modes on them, right? I yeah. mean. It's got to be big. Um, I don't think dropping, you know, a limited time mode, like, I don't know. It, it just, like, dropping, like, a Fiesta mode, that's not really exciting to me, uh, you know, considering we've had those modes um, in the Halo for a long time already. So it'd have to be something big, like a, a BR Warzone or, 
you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel you. And, and so, Kevin, what do you think, man? Put, put your put your boss hat on. What do you? What, what's going to get all these people back on Halo Infinite? Well, I think a surefire way to get people back on would be some form of campaign DLC. Mm. I think that would be like just like a true Halo experience. You can like you 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 already proved you can do it with Halo Infinite already. And uh, the previous campaign experiences, I think that's like a surefire, easy Halo way to go about doing it. I'm sure we're all probably more thinking more long term <laughs> multiplayer aspect of the whole thing. Again, like like you mentioned too, like saying like a battle royale or some crazy new PVE mode, just something like I said, like mainly something new that we just haven't really experienced before. Mm -hmm. uh, but also something like you also kind of need to help kind of foster. Uh, all the smaller sub communities of Halo, because I don't think any. I mean, I might be a little more like in the echo chamber of this whole thing, but I feel like Halo might have like the most divided sub communities of like any kind of like popular like console <laughs> shooter out there right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because yeah. and like I, I even did a poll on my channel. I got over like five thousand votes on it, and I did like four different options. Like, do you mainly play Slayer, ranked BTB, or Variety, which being like Infection, FFA? you know swat fiesta and stuff like that with 45 percent, it was the variety saying they mainly play infection you know fiesta swat so it's like by guarantee if you put any one of those singular modes against like social slayer or even ranked or btp they'd all be below but like it's kind of like death by a thousand cuts kind of thing where you don't have all those extra little game modes that can help you know support those communities you just kind of see lose that little bit of like that little like base level support that you would need for like the top end heavy stuff like a social slayer or ranked or BTB and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, to close out, say like sure fireway campaign DLC and also um, maybe just kind of like the slow burn of growth of, you know, bringing in these modes that we were all accustomed to having with a halo game uh, in halo infinite. Yeah. I feel like that lack of that lack of base stuff like that, that we all kind of expect when it comes to a halo game, is something that I feel like would definitely help, but I agree with both of you. Like dropping a big mode, like like a, a, a you know the battle royale or a war zone return or a campaign. I mean, I can guarantee you, like all the campaign. And I was always big on campaign, so um, bringing another story aspect, bringing like some more stuff to do on story would be a fantastic thing. But I guarantee you, if battle royale comes out into the play, then everyone's gonna come back and try it. You know what I mean? Everyone's oh, yeah. gonna say, "All right, let me let me try this battle royale. Let's see how it is." You know, mm -hmm. and and I always felt that. Four, I, I I really want to see how Forge is. I know that Forge is like that. It's that mystery. Like you're like I keep getting these rumors about what you can do in Forge. But what if it finally shows up and it can do everything it says to do? If you were to give me that Forge, it's almost like you're creating like you can create straight up like it's like incredible. Like you can create story missions or straight up like you can use AI like any way you want it to. Like you can you can adjust anything. If you can use that Forge and mix it with like a battle royale game mode, like I. People are making battle royale maps to play for the public. That'd be insane. Like uh, something like along those lines, or even if they were to bring in firefight and use forge to create firefight modes or stuff like that. I feel like bringing the community with you kind of brings in a lot more people to come back, right? And I think mm. that there's a large portion of the Halo community that's just waiting, and that's that forge community, that group of people that say, "I like making game modes and maps," and I can't wait for that to come back because. They, they are so creative, like way more creative than I could be when it comes to making those maps. Like I applaud them for all the work they do. Um, but yeah, I agree with you guys. Okay, give us some story aspects. Give us some, you know, and some game modes here. Bring back some Forge. I think all these things are going to definitely help. And that's why I know having you guys on here being put your boss hats on is definitely going to help with that. But, uh, you know, they just to kind of go along with Battle Royale, we got to talk about the rumor Tatanka game mode essentially is a almost confirmation that the battle royale is in development by certain affinity and basically according to these leaks there there's a lot of stuff talking about it like they have the pvp aspects i know kevin you had also mentioned the fact that they there is some parts of it either it's in a separate game mode it's pve or there are actually some aspects of the battle royale that have pve in it as well which is very interesting um because it's like that mixture between a war zone and a battle royale type of thing and i think hearing that is pretty cool um, and everyone all over the Halo community and beyond that are saying, hey, you know, having a Halo Battle Royale, like, you know, I remember when Halo Infinite was coming out, people were saying, oh, I don't want a Battle Royale in Halo. And then a lot of other people like, I really would like a Battle Royale in Halo. You know what I mean? Like, there's that mix of like, people like, oh, Battle Royales are not good for Halo. And some people like, you know what? I kind of would, would be interested in seeing one. And I kind of want to ask you guys, you know, 
how would you, especially when you're looking at battle royals like from Apex and Fortnite and Warzone, you're, it's hard to compete, right? Because those are the top level battle royale game modes at the moment. So if you were to make a Halo battle royale, and this, I'm asking you these giant questions here, Kevin, I'm going to go to you first on this one. <laughs> if you're making an Halo Infinite battle royale mode, how would you organize this thing to make it interesting? Like, and you don't have to, I don't have to give you, give me your dissertation on everything, but if you want to say some aspects of it, you want to say that that's fine by me. Cause that's a big question. How would you organize it? I mean, you, you, if you're framing it, like you're putting me on the spot here, but it's only <laughs> something we've been talking about in the halo community for the last like four years now at this point or something, I've had some time to think about it, <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Uh, but I would say, uh, one definitely would be just like for like the the map aesthetic of it. I'd say either just use the campaign map or utilize that same aesthetic. I think that would be perfect for the game. Uh, the sandbox is basically already built for battle royale. I mean, like we have like the danger zone, like we we seen that coming with other game modes like Last Spartan Standing and Attrition. Uh, so they have that mechanic working. Uh, one thing I always thought about when it came to like a Halo Battle Royale, you would still want to use like equipment or the power ups and stuff like that, right? But you didn't want to use those power ups right when you pick them up, right when you touch them, right? You'd want to save them from later, which you'd need to activate, which they have that mechanic now with Halo Infinite as well. And uh, I think one way to, you know, besides just like, you know, being like a standard Battle Royale, throw 100 players here you know, on the map, circle closes in, it, it's going to be fun, but it's mm -hmm. not going to really be anything. It'd be like you got Halo has to do their own kind of twist on the battle royale experience. I feel to where it'd make it something a little bit more Halo like rather than just feeling like you know, uh, rather than feeling just like PUBG with space lasers, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, Seriously, I would say like one thing it could do is like we had this in the campaign, so that technology is already there, uh, to bring in like the HVTs from the campaign and put that into the battle royale where like you basically just have like these you know little pockets of hvts that have like high powerful weapons and you probably surround them with like you know boxes of loot with better weapons if you want to the kind of you know entice players to get involved with it but i think it kind of like a, brings up a risk reward thing of like creating all this noise wasting ammo but you get a really good gun and get some good gear out of the whole process as well which i think would be you know very much uh, a unique aspect that halo can bring i think apex does a little bit of that but not to the extent that I'm thinking about, you know, with Halo. Um, but I think that would be something that would be really cool with a Halo Battle Royale is, like, yeah, so, like, you know, the mechanics are right there in the game, but I think beyond just having, like, a map with random weapon spawns, I think having the HVTs in there would, like, be a really cool mix-up. Yeah, for sure. Act Bro, I know you were mentioning you want to see this Battle Royale. Is, what, <laughs> how would you organize this, man? Uh, I think a lot of uh, what Kevin said was really great, actually. I love the idea with the H HVCs. Sorry, I forget the acronym. Uh, High value targets, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, HVTs. Mm -hmm. um, I love that concept where you have like, uh, you know, you have a PVE aspect in addition to the PVP. And uh, there is a risk reward going after it. You know, you're going to have to fight uh, like a big grunt or whatever it is. <laughs> and uh you could take on yap yap in a yeah, yeah i was gonna say yeah yeah, yeah yap yap yeah oh my let's god let's like, make that happen come on yeah exactly um I, I would love to see all that type of stuff and i was kind of thinking about you know it'd be interesting if they chose to go in a direction of like do you, do you have shields do you have to find shields to pick it up or is it more of like an odst style of play too um interesting something to think about i i don't know where i am on that but i also think uh a couple things. I think it would be kind of a perfect timing because, you know, the big VRs right now are like Warzone and Fortnite, right? And those yeah. titles are both pretty old by gaming standards, even though they have like, an, they keep reiterating on it. Um, they're years old. So it's not like a new thing. Halo VR coming out would be big. A lot of people would flock to it. And uh, uh, what's the last thing? Yeah, I guess I guess that's it. I kind of forgot. Yeah. What, what uh, listen, you can always jump in. You can always yeah. be like, "Yo, Mars man, shut up! I got something to say." <laughs> Just tell me. Listen, I I I think both you guys are are spot on on this. And at the end of the day, like you you already have the map, mate. Like you the the store the campaign map is easily can just be reintroduced and and just reuse that, right? And now, granted, there has been a lot of rumors that certain if was going to use a mixture of a Halo two and a Halo three map combined to make like. And I'm already thinking like, all right. Um, Hemorrhage and Valhalla are going to be combined and that's going to be, you know, something like it is one of those two maps combined. They're going to make 
you know the battle royale map and um and now if i'm thinking to myself i think if and just to even add on to the high value targets i'm thinking of having bases like if you're going to compete against like uh you know have player pve aspects that have like banish control bases and if you can kill the banish and take the base you get a drop pod or something like drop pods or vehicles you can drop in and all of a sudden now that creates more competition to control the base um and then it sets up a good defense for you and even have those larger areas that you know from the story aspect where they have like the you know like those mini i forgot what they call them like those mini uh you know little story uh, side side quests where they have like the you know the gasoline tanks whatever like if you have those actually also tied to to loot as well i feel like that would make things even more interesting and i think that and, and this is where you three for three struggles whenever they come up with a good idea like last barton standing they just say all right let's just keep the same thing not change anything at all and just just have this just hit you in the head with this thing constantly if they were to come up with a battle royale have some variation. I think Axbro came up with a really good idea with the OD, like the ODST style. Like, why don't you come up with an ODST battle royale, have a regular standard battle royale, and then now you can have it where it's like variation. Be like, I want to have no shields and have to pick up shields, or have shields on me already and do it that way. Or I think Kevin, you might have mentioned uh, one of these in, in your previous videos about maybe do a battle royale with like teams, right? I know that Fortnite used to run a, like a team based, you know, game mode where it was. 50 v 50 like why don't you do like a multi-team battle royale like a three like if it's a, if let's just say 60 people 20 20 20 right? and just have everyone ballot out for points and just respawn and just keep like having stuff like that like you can easily get people to come out and play and that battle royale i play it all the time i literally would enjoy it i'd be like hey let's squad up let's get as many kids we can on our team and let's just go at it and, and playing on a campaign level and obviously you as you add more to that level you had more environments, it's going to cause more variation and it's going to be more fun. I feel like Battle Royales, as much as it gets a lot of flack because uh, people like people who don't like Fortnite, they're going to like, oh, you're going to bring like Fortnite vibes into Halo. Like, I don't see Master Chief doing some dances in the Halo Infinite. Like, that's not going to happen. I already saw that in Fortnite. I, I don't want to get that out of my head. But the whole point is like, they're not going to do that stuff. Like, but they're going to, they're going to have like, Battle Royale is a fun game mode. It's it's like it's like literally just elimination. It's just a bigger so having that with Halo Infinite and do it the right way would literally definitely bring a lot of people back and it would be a lot of fun for sure. I mean, I I do appreciate you both giving like those are great ideas. Like that's why we built up this this video this way. You know what I mean? That's what I have you guys on here for. Um listen three for three, just listen up. I'm telling you, we got this. Uh Next up, we got to talk about the story, all right? Like, the story, and, and I like I already told you guys before, multiplayer is such a big aspect to me, but I was brought into Halo for the first time because of the story, of how much I love the story from Halo 2, and I always I played every game because of it, and it's legendary. I mean, when you compare Halo Infinite's story to the rest of the installments by 3 for 3, this looks like a masterpiece. I mean, Halo 4 had a good story. Uh, they had some, like, mixed reviews on it, but... I mean, Halo 5 story was just horrifying. I mean, like, I, I, and that's how I always compare it. Um, but Halo Infinite story had some good things. It was kind of matching to around Halo Reach and levels of popularity of where, where they like the story, in my opinion. Um, but obviously, there's some flaws, right? The fact that there's lack of environments, um, the lack of characters, and even lack of factions that you're going up against. These are all things that, you know, a lot of people kind of picked apart. And they do agree to have, uh, you know, that they, that is an issue. Now, the fact that a few months ago, 343 put that you know trademark on Halo the Endless, and it was almost confirmed by Joseph Staten that that's going to be the name of the next major DLC installment or next story component it's going to be that he's currently still writing. Um, and we can speculate all day long about what the story is going to be, but I, I don't want to put that on you guys on the spot for that one. But one thing I do want to ask you about is uh, who or what do you think will make a return in the next story DLC drop. And this could be characters, groups, or even new gameplay mechanics that could be whatever you guys think. And you guys you can be as variable or as little as you want. I mean, and act bro, I gotta ask you this one. This is a this is a big question. What and you can go as small as you want. Any characters, groups, or anything. What do you think will be make a return uh, what do to this I new story? What do I think will be or what do I yeah. want to be? Oh well you can be both, man. You can say, okay. hey, what do you what do you think and what do you want? Oh man. Uh <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, they talked about the, the sorry, was it the Endless, right? Yeah. Yeah, the new faction, um, the Harbinger that you killed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I would want, I would love the RV to make an appearance oh, again, yeah. you know what I mean? The oh, RV yeah. and, uh, I mean, the fan favorite, you gotta have the Flood back, right? That would just mm -hmm. be so cool. 
Yeah. See them no, infect some of the endless too. See what that looks like. I don't. Whew. So many possibilities, you know. Yeah. That's no. What I seriously. Personally would love. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you so you think Arby's gonna make make that comeback? You think he's gonna be? In I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like three four three doesn't like the Arby. So. <laughs> Dude, I I only know that Keith David when asked is like, "Hey, is Arbiter in Halo Infinite?" He's like, "I have to. If I tell you, I have to kill you." So I'm like, "Hey." Hey, maybe, a little maybe secret. He will I would love yeah, for him totally. to come back. Yeah. Dude, Dude, he could just said no. Awesome. Yeah, he could just like no. <laughs> but he like that's hey. true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> he give that little cryptic answer there. Yeah, Kevin. I mean, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Jack, bro. You gonna say something else? Oh, I was gonna say maybe that's that's the big thing. I, that would bring me back to play Dude, some more. Halo. He's my I'll guy, man. I my older brother always made me play second player in Halo Three, so I was RB all the way. <laughs> that was oh, my man, guy. I have Invis. This sucks. I was like, oh no, oh Invis. I'm sorry. Um. So Kevin, what do you? So who? I ask you, do you think will make the comeback, or, or who do you want to make also be in the next story drop? Well, I think you're on point with saying like the flood because I I think the flood are just going to come back at some point. I think they kind of have like a really big reveal probably planned for the flood. They can't just be like, oh, now the flood are you know, you're yeah, playing fact they're here. Someone, you know? <laughs> oops, they, they yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> oops, I pressed the button, you know. Kind yeah, of stuff. yeah. Uh, but actually, one character I would really like to see come back, which you know, was in a recent book, which actually was a very good book, was um, uh, 343 Guilty Spark. Ooh, I think it'd be great to see him come back. I think he's always, his character dynamic, I think, was always really cool because depending on the situation, he was either your friend or your foe. Because he, but you know that his, you know, goals in the story, story-wise were always the same throughout the whole thing. But depending on the situation and what comes up, you know, he might be, you know, you know, helping you or, or you know, trying to kill you like in Halo 3. Uh, we do know that he survived. And in point of light, he does take over uh, from like an Ancilla, which is kind of like those little floaty ball things, to now uh, a soldier actually from Halo 4 or Halo 5, I should say. Mm -hmm. And so that's the kind of like his new like body archetype that they transferred him over into in point of light. So, and we didn't really hear much they, they didn't really like lead into anything else with that book. It's, you know, cause I think now they're trying to keep the books, the books and the games, the games, but you know, borrow from the books when they can or vice versa kind of stuff. Uh, but I think guilty spark would be a really cool addition for one nostalgia. And two, but like if he has like his new body type of being like a, a, a forerunner soldier uh, would look pretty cool in the, the new graphics. And I think also kind of twi put a twist on things where like, you know, we fought them for, all throughout Halo Five and Halo Four, I think they're in it as well. Yeah, correctly. yeah. They, they have the, they have a weird. They they had the knights were basically the main guards for yeah. Halo Four, but yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, and so I think that'd be kind of a, a cool twist of things if you bring three four three guilty spark back. Of course, then the flight could also come back because they are on, you know re released they, they on the uh, on the arc right now. So you know, there's yeah. a way to get that in there as well. Well, I'll say what I think, who I think, or which group I think. Um, the Spirit of Fire, I think, is going to make the return. I think mm. the Spirit of Fire was the main group that was facing off against the Banish in Halo Wars 2. I feel like, you know, like it, they had that leaked, uh, you know, video clip of like um, Echo 216 was like, oh, you know, someone's here and you're like, all right, who's this? And I'm thinking the Spirit of Fire, I think it's going to show a pan of the ship just, just arriving and it's going to be like, oh, we got some backup and it's going to be them. And I'm like, that, that actually is going to be interesting because, you know, Halo Wars 2 generally wasn't a bad game, but just didn't really accomplish much with what their intentional goal was. But they did introduce the Banish, which was a pretty cool group and you get the backstory of them. So I think the spirit of fire is going to make a return. Um, I really want the Arbiter back. I think we need that scene. I know the only scene we ever had of this was I want the Arbiter chief back again. And the only time we got that was the end of Halo five. And it was late for two seconds. And it was Halsey saying, Oh, it took you long enough. Like, like, yo, come on. I've been waiting for like a, more than a decade to see these two guys back at it again. And you give me that one line is that's it. Like, I want to see these two guys back, and I want to see the Arbiter, like, kicking some ass again, like, and just yelling at people. I just want him yelling and slicing yeah. away like he normally does, and I'd be, like, I'd be ecstatic. Because, and, and obviously, you can go into a whole plethora of characters. I mean, obviously, we all know Locke has survived, and he's still on the ring, and that's, like, they just never really went into that. I mean, like, as much as Locke was a nothing character, and he was something, background wise was cool, and I want him to have, like, a, a redemption arc of some kind, to be like, give this guy some character, please, because his backstory is cool, but you literally wrote him to be like just boring, right? Give him something mm. cool and give him some redemption. Like say, hey, you know, obviously I have Arbiter in there, but have Locke in there too, and just give him some like some cool side missions to do and at least build up his character a little bit more. I think that'd be pretty cool. 
Um, but yeah, listen, I, I can't wait to see what they do bring in the, in the analyst because Joseph Staden is that guy that's going to bring back every memorable moment possible. He loves doing that stuff to be like, just hit those nostalgia strings just right. And I can already tell that when he's writing the story, he's just going to like, oh, Arbiter's back. He's going to say uh, words so easy uh, at some point. And <laughs> just to get my heart or heart strings tugging, no, he's going to just do that. So that's, that's what he'll do. Um, so hopefully... That is the case. Hopefully all of all the characters we say in groups or we say are going to come into the next part. That'd be great. Um, but we let's jump to the last question. And this is a, this is going to be a tough one. But firstly, uh, three for three. OK, we all know that they when they took over the uh, Halo franchise in 2012, I was just to get some context here. I, I was in high school and I'm sitting there like at this point, I when they when I heard that three for three was taking over, you know, Halo. And I, I remember the E3 trailer dropped of showing Halo 4 was being in development. I was like, I remember my cousin was like, hey man, like Halo 4 is coming. I'm like, no, you're lying to me. Like this, that's not happening. And all of a sudden I look online, I'm like, oh my God, Halo, Halo 4 is coming. And I was like, ex I was ecstatic, right? And so Halo 4 comes out and mixed reviews. Obviously the story has some good emotional moments, but the online was essentially a clone of Call of Duty, but just worse. Like if you can't be better than, if you're trying to be Call of Duty, and you can't even be better than the current Call of Duty, that's not a good look to you, right? So you essentially made a Call of Duty game with a good story, and then you had Halo 5 drop, which was a, and I said this before, a Titanfall game. Um, good multiplayer. I thought it was, I, I mean, let me just tell you, it was one of the sweatiest things I think I've ever had to do in my life. Um, I essentially had to buy a, a pro controller for that game, um, and like it was, it was a constant sweat fest every time you played. Um, multiplayer had a lot of stuff in it, but the campaign was horrible, right? And so up to this point, three for three was struggling as, as you know, as we all know, and Halo Infinite is, you know, that game where a lot, like I said before, is that make or break. And they come out with Halo Infinite has a good story, enjoyable multiplayer, but just a lack of content. And it causes fans to be frustrated and rightfully so, because it feels like three for three has not been able to hit a home run. Like I said, they hit a single but not a home run on any of the games they made to this point. And I feel like most fans are saying does th they, they are unsure if three for three has the ability to handle halo going forward. And I kind of want to get your opinion. Do you think the halo series would be better off being given to another company under Microsoft's umbrella? Kevin, I'm going to have to go to you on this one first. Do you think that it'd be the halo? This series would be better off going somewhere else. Or staying with three for three. Uh, I kind of touched on this uh, in one of my more recent videos. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say mention that. Drew, give pull a little plug on there. Yeah, the video. Uh, but, yeah. My video by Tyler saying Bonnie Ross saved Halo, which is like people go like, "What the hell are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, "Well, when you think about it, yeah." Because uh, according to Bonnie Ross, this is what she said that uh, Microsoft wasn't quite sure what they wanted to do with Halo. You know, after uh, Halo Reach. They're thinking maybe like one or two games more and maybe call it good, you know, kind of thing. Cause it really wasn't much more to really expand on what Halo is besides just kind of releasing another one kind of thing. And uh, especially since like the re re declining return in sales from after Halo 3, cause that was kind of like the peak popularity right there. Yeah. So, like, like I say, I brought this up in my video where I don't really think anything would be that different. Uh, if it was just like a different company because uh, Bonnie Ross made the argument to have Halo made by Microsoft. And so 343 is just like an extension of Microsoft. They're just the team that works on Halo and they're called 343 kind of thing. So um, I don't think it's like all 343s fall for why Halo, it, you know, has had a rough decade essentially. Because, uh, you know, basically Microsoft has to go like, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, for the mm -hmm. most part. <laughs> yeah, uh, seriously. Yeah, they did think about, you know, maybe handing off the Gearbox back in the day, who, you know, at the time was just getting popular with the uh, the Borderlands series, who did work on the PC port for uh, Halo 1. Uh, so I don't know if we really would see really that much of a difference with any kind of company, because it, it seemed like through Microsoft was kind of like pressuring Halo to try to expand, get a bigger audience, you know, especially with the popularity of Call of Duty and now we have Battle Royale, those Battle Royale games are super popular now uh, at the time, that we would still see like Halo trying to make this push to get a bigger audience, you know, adding in sprints or uh, mm -hmm. adding in a Battle Royale if needed kind of things and stuff like that. So um, maybe things might be a little bit better 
you know, but I think we'd still have the, you know, the ups and downs that we had with like Halo 4 being like Call of Duty, where like, you know, it tried to appeal to Call of Duty players, but Call of Duty players didn't like it because I played like Halo. And Halo mm-hmm. players didn't like it because I played like Call of Duty. So it didn't really make anybody happy. And then during the, you know, advanced movement phase of shooters, yeah, we had Halo try to jump on that, which I actually really like Halo 5's multiplayer. It's probably my favorite one since Halo 3. Uh, at that point, but now I'd say Halo is probably my favorite one since Halo 3. Uh, but again, like I'm following trends, trying to reach that broader audience and not really doing it super well. So I think we'd still see general trend following uh, if it was any other kind of company, because I think my, ultimately Microsoft would be the ones pulling the strings on the whole thing. Uh, but I don't really know if things would be better. I really mm-hmm. just don't think so. Yeah, I I feel like a lot of people do agree with that. Um, and Act Bro, what do you think, man? I mean, do you think that that Halo would be better off? I mean, listen, you we've all played the old Halo games with Bungie, and you know, obviously, three for three is trying to mount or meet that you know that that tradition. And you know, do you think they'd be better off given to somebody else? Uh I don't think so. I don't think so. I think uh, there's a lot of technical knowledge that goes into what they have at the moment now. So. If you were to try to transfer all that over to a different team, uh, if you're looking for content right now, it's going to push it way back on schedule. Or So if you want content now, I mean, maybe if you're looking at like the next game, you could think about it. But there's also a lot of um, a lot of brain brain work there, too. Like people who've been with Bungie and 343 for a very long time, very familiar with Halo, how they like to do stuff. So it would be, I think it would be very difficult to say that it would be in a better place with a different company. Um, I don't know. Maybe if you had like a spinoff game or something, something like that, where you could have them kind of test the waters. But for now, I feel like you have to have 343 kind of manning the guns when it comes to mainstream Halo games. Yeah, no, I feel, and, and I completely agree with the both of you. I mean, the fact is like, I would, and I said this before, when Halo 5 had, I, everything was finalized i was playing halo 5 a lot even it well into like that that five-year gap window and i was playing it all the time um and i was nervous going into halo infinite i i didn't know what direction we were going to go into whether we were going to go more advanced movement like i said before where we start climbing walls and stuff like i didn't know where we were going um now when we play halo infinite i i feel more relieved because i know that okay we're i think three for three is and it's been a decade more than a de- like been a decade now they think they starting to finally understand like what halo is after 10 years like you know maybe it's not the smart idea to chase trends and rather just stick to the the things that make halo what it is um and even though like you should be doing more than what you've given us but stick to what work stick to what halo is and you're gonna have the halo fans be generally happy for the most part and i think that three for three also realized too that the leadership that's there like there's some aspects of it that like we saw with Halo 5, like the writing was just bad, right? It was just they didn't have the right people there that were pushing the right the you know topics or the right themes of Halo for a while. And now that you're bringing in old bungee devs that were part of the original trilogies, that you're starting to see a change in the tides. Like Joseph Satan coming back, and you know, I might sound like a Joseph Satan homer because I kinda am at this point, but you know, he's he basically is that guy that we all recognize as the dude from the old game, right? And and now you're starting to see like every time somebody leaves from three for three, they're getting replaced with an old bungee dev, right? And it's almost like they're saying, hey, we're bringing back the classic vibes of what Halo is. And I'm already sure that like Jason Jones is going to come back at some point because it's like they're trying to bring <laughs> back that, you know, they're trying to bring back the old guard, right? And even certain affinity being added on to help Halo Infinite, you know, the, the head of certain affinity was head of the multiplayer for Halo 2. Like, it's like, these are people that used to work on, you know, the old games. And I feel like, as three for three is starting to learn that maybe you should stop drifting away from the old the old feelings and try to try to match that and maybe just expand on the content, then you're gonna be okay. And I felt like that like them jumping to like Bethesda and saying, "Hey, Bethesda, take Halo. I want you to make make a Halo game." And all of a sudden, you're gonna gonna start getting Fallout 76 stuff. Like it's just not it, it's not that's not Halo. Like it's a, it's a different vibe, right? You're gonna have Wolfenstein vibes as much as people like those games and. Don't get me wrong, I don't, I don't mind Wolfenstein or any of those games, but that's not Halo, right? And and once you start handing that off to others, 
then you're not going to get that same classic feeling we had when we first picked up the controller and playing Halo games. So I think three for three at least is heading in the right direction. Not necessarily that they're perfect because they aren't, but they're doing some things right and you can definitely build on it. Like Halo Infinite struggle is content. It's not because the game gameplay is wrong or the story is wrong. It's just lack of stuff to do. And if three for three was saying, you know what, let's just make get chief whacked in the first mission let's just introduce Locke as the main protagonist and let's just roll with it, then I'd be like, yep, you know what? Throw out three for three, throw them in the garbage, and let's just start off anew because that'd be different, right? But that's not what's happening here. It's just they're lacking content. And granted, they deserve flack for that. I'm not going to defend them for a lack of content. They've had a lot of time to get stuff rolling, but that's just, that, that's just me. I feel like they are at least heading in the right direction. Could be doing better. Don't get me wrong. I, I know I'm, I'll probably get attacked by fans that don't agree with me there, but they're, they're not perfect. Don't get me wrong. But they're heading in the somewhat right direction. Just got to mm-hmm. fix those little things, and they'll be all right. I mean, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Kevin. I was saying that uh, I think we're in the first problem that we've had in the last 10 years is that people want more of this Halo game. Yeah. We haven't had that with Halo 4 or Halo 5, and uh, so that's a good problem to have yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit in a way like or like you mentioned also early about like you know uh embracing or having more bungee devs come back like we just announced that paul burton's coming back yep. who was part of bungee from 2000 to 2012 looking here on linkedin coming back as a technical design director so you know we could find a way to capture those same halo feels again but i think even though like the state of game is not in a good state spot right now i think we're in a good place to where we could still build off of this game mm-hmm. where the future is still has possibilities um that's just me just like taking straight hope and rain to the vein right there basically <laughs> yeah, yeah. but Seriously. uh like i said like a, okay like i said like you know we're i think you know this is the first time i've seen in 10 years that people want more of this halo game rather than uh the opposite of just saying this is all trash don't play it <laughs> that's a great yeah. point that's a great point no and, and i was really about to say the same thing like the fact that fans aren't saying oh this game's trash or the gameplay's trash or the story's trash they're just like i there's not there's just lack of stuff to do mm. and like that's the issue here right and i and i get it people are they want to they want to go after three for three and i understand i'm not saying don't feel the way you're feeling but i my biggest thing and, and anyone that's watched my channel before i've always been that like calming voice here i'm like guys i get it you're all angry i understand but let's just take a step back let's like look at this perspective you know, right perspective here and i'm some people are like no you're like you're no like you're wrong i get it like just me trust me like i understand like but let's just take a step back and like it'll be all right it's just and unfortunately i hate like i hate i'm a patient guy and sometimes i hate it but sometimes patience is gonna benefit in the long run but I hate, I, I know people like, I, I'm not patient though. Like, I get it. I get it. But mm. we, sometimes patience is going to help. Like, this game I've eventually, unfortunately, it's like, um, I say eventually, this game in time will bounce back. I, I have a f- strong feeling it will. As long as the deadlines they tell us are going to be matched, then it's going to be fine. I'm sure the pitchforks will start coming every time something is delayed of some sort. I get it. But once this stuff starts dropping, you know, I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. I'm gonna do a, a year in review of Halo Infinite when that day comes around, um, because I was on that like you know, Kevin. You said the Hopium. I was on. I was on something when I made my review of Halo Infinite because I was. I gave this game. I. I'll be honest. I gave this game a nine point three because I was. I must have been doing some crack or something. But like, dude, I literally was like, yeah, this is a nine point three. But in, in reality, if I was looking back, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? This is probably around an eight point eight or an eight point seven because. Yeah, you know, it's a great game, but there's a lack of stuff, right? And I maybe it was my mindset of saying in the future, this game will hit a 9.3. Because I'm like, I had that hope of like, if all this stuff is there, it's going to be an awesome game. Like, and that's how I look at it. So, yeah, let's, listen, guys. I mean, that's the that's the round, day, round table discussion for the day. I really do appreciate you guys coming on and talking some Halo with me because... You know, I'm a big fan of Halo. We're all big fans of Halo. So we are obviously going to be, you know, real with you guys. Um, and the fact that we all have these different perspectives and experiences with Halo does help with these type of discussions. And and obviously, I have to thank my my special guest for the day, Kevin Coolex and the Act Bro. You guys are awesome. Like, and you know, like I said, if three for three listened to us more often, I think we'd be all <laughs> all good here. Um, so listen, uh, anything you guys want to say before you head out, Kevin? I'll let you take the floor first. Anything you want to say before we close out this thing? Uh, just want to say thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. It was a good chat for sure. Definitely, uh, definitely, it's gonna be a good video. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate Definitely. it. I'll, you'll see me in the comments for sure. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. sweet. <laughs> Act bro, 
Any, anything you got to say before we close this thing out, man? Uh, yeah, it's just thanks for having me on. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you too, Kevin, and uh, mm. hope to talk to you guys soon. Yeah, for sure, guys. You're always welcome on, on, on my channel. I, you know, I love to talk with you guys more often. Um, but please, guys, if you haven't done so yet, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And please go subscribe to Kevin Collects and The Act, bro. Their channels are in the description below. Please go do that. Support the support YouTube partners here. Support your boys. Uh, thank you guys for watching. This is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace out, guys.